In this video, you'll learn to make an AI follow the player around the level using Godot 3.5's new navigation system. There was such an algorithm in Godot 3.4, but the new one is faster, more flexible, and a lot more powerful. In this video, we'll see the basic navigation, and in the next one, we'll see how to use the new real-time obstacle avoidance feature you can see in action right here with the two black holes. This video is sponsored by our Godot courses. We have courses for beginners and experienced developers. More on that at the end of the video. This project is free and open source. You can find all the demos and videos we made about new features in Godot 3.5 in the description below. Let's first talk about what is new with the navigation in Godot 3.5 and Godot 4. You've seen the ability to avoid obstacles in real time. The previous system did not allow for that. This is simple avoidance, but it's much welcome and it has a low performance impact. Talking of performance, this new system is supposedly designed to support multi-threading and offer greater performance than the previous one. I haven't benchmarked it, so you'll have to test for yourself. Another thing is the flexibility and usability improvements it brings you. You can see right here, I have some gaps in the area my AI here can navigate. When I run the game though, it can cross the gaps, no problem. The previous system needed you to perfectly match edges of navigation polygons, and it was a real pain to use. So this is a major uh, UX improvement. Now, you can also recalculate bake or stream these navigation polygons at runtime and you can move them and do lots of things there's a lot more flexibility uh, speaking of which you now have access to the navigation server a new api that gives you fairly low level access to the navigation system and allows you as you can see uh, for example with the region bake nav mesh function to rebake the navigation meshes in real time. So I'll let you look into that. It's for more advanced users than most of us have, but it's still a welcome addition for larger teams. Also, the way it works is a bit different from before, but the code is fairly simple once you've learned it, and you're going to do that in this video. You still use a navigation 2D node, and then you place these new navigation agent nodes in your hierarchy and they will automatically detect the navigation 2d and work and uh, update the navigation calculations for obstacles you use these navigation obstacle 2d nodes which we will see in the next video for now let's look at how to create a scene where the enemy follows the player around the level in the Godot project linked below the video you will find a scene you can use to quickly follow along. You can press Control Shift O to open the quick open scene and search for tutorial to find the navigation server to the tutorial start scene. This one contains a background, a tile map, some collisions to get us started quickly. An enemy, that's a kinematic body with a sprite collision shape and a timer will use to recalculate the path to the player and a player that can move around the level. If you press F6 to play the scene, you can move the player. The enemy has a script attached to save some steps, but it's empty. With that, let's start setting up navigation. As with the previous system, we need to start by creating a navigation 2D node. So select the root node of the scene and search for navigation 2D. I'm going to create that one. It's the parent node for the navigation system. It allows um, Godot to find paths between agents and targets. Now, to work, this needs a couple of polygons that define where the agents, the AIs, can move. So to define that, you add a new node as a child called a navigation polygon instance. Actually, you can create several of those, which um, we're going to do because uh, with one polygon, it can be a bit difficult to cover uh, all the gaps in our level. So first, to create your polygon, you click the empty slot next to NavPoly in the inspector and create the navigation polygon resource. This then allows you to click to create polygons like this. Now we're going to make this uh, as clean as we can. So we're uh, going to select the node and click to create a point that avoids 
the borders of the level. And the reason for that is that our enemy has a large collision shape, so we don't want it to bump into the edges too much. You know, we, we want the pathfinding to avoid these curves around there. So we put some margin uh, between the level's edges and the enemy because all the uh, bright blue you can see here is going to block the enemy and the player. Now you can see here I'm making one um, polygon and I'm going to make another one for the bottom area and a couple more to bridge these areas. So I'm going to skip ahead. I went ahead and created three more navigation polygon nodes the same way as the first one and uh, created shapes to cover the map. Now, you're going to see some gaps and some uh, overlap between the shapes in there. And with this new system, we have a setting to automatically connect the shape at runtime um, if the gap is small enough. To control that, you can select the Navigation 2D node and you will see the edge connection margin in the inspector. This is the distance uh, allowed between edges of different navigation polys um, that the AIs can cross in pixels. So we can use something a bit large like 10 pixels just to make sure that our AI here, the enemy, will be able to navigate through the entire level like this. The next step now is to add an agent, a new kind of node that will allow the enemy to navigate this navigation to the area. So select the enemy ship or your AI in your game and add a new navigation agent to the node as a child of it. This new node has a couple of properties you can use to control how far the AI can stray away from the ideal path, mostly with the path maximum distance. When the AI collides with elements in the level, it will necessarily be pushed away from the, the calculated path on the navigation polygon. Uh, so you can increase this value to give the AI a bit more leeway. Now, the next thing is uh, the navigation agent by default will not automatically find this navigation node. The easiest setup we can create is placing the enemy as a child of the navigation node. There are other functions that you can use if you look for the navigation uh, server that allow you to connect an agent with some navigation, but the simplest setup is this one. You place the enemies as children of the navigation node and the navigation agent will automatically find the navigation to the parent. With that, we have everything we can to code the pathfinding and make the enemy ship follow the player. So let's get scripting. The first thing that we need to do is to get a path to the player node. Uh, to do that in a flexible way, we're going to export a new variable called path to player. And we're going to store a node path in this. This uh, allows us to get a path to a given node, but also to change it at runtime or from a script and something like this. Uh, so you can select the enemy ship node and click the assign button next to path to player to get the player node at this stage. Well, to get the path to the player node, then we still need to get the node. And to do that, we create an already variable, I'm going to call it player. And uh, we're going to call get node, the get node function can get uh, the name of a child node or something like that, but it also supports node path values stored in variables. So this allows you to create multiple enemies that might change target or that have different targets, those kinds of things. Next, we need a reference to the navigation agent 2D. So in Godot 3.5, you can control click and drag on the node to automatically create an already variable for it. And I'm going to call that variable agent. We're going to use it to calculate the path to the player. Now we're going to start in the ready function by calling agent.set target location. And that location will be the player's global position. Uh, this is the function you call to update the path finding and have Godot recalculate the path to the player. Then to update the internal state of the AI agent, 
in a processing function like physics process, so every frame, you need to call agent.getNextLocation. Right? It's going to calculate the next place the agent wants to move to. And the thing I like to do is to use steering behavior to smooth out the AI agent's motion. So what I'll typically do is calculate a direction to the next location from that. So you can say I'm going to take the current global position of my enemy and calculate the direction to the agent's uh, next desired move location. It's the next uh, location on the path it found to the player, to the target. From this, we can define a new variable that we use to keep track of our enemy ship's velocity and increase or decrease it as it moves. So I'm going to define a new velocity variable. It's going to start at vector 2.0. And we have a steering equation that we've covered before that goes like this. We calculate the desired velocity. It's the direction we just calculated multiplied by a maximum speed. So we can say, for example, 500 pixels per second. And then we calculate a steering vector. It's the difference between the current and desired velocity. And we add a portion of that to the current velocity. Uh, this makes the ship accelerate and decelerate as it moves closer and farther away from the target and gives it a smooth motion. And then uh, because this enemy is a kinematic body 2D node, we can call move and slide and pass that the velocity. And you can also as assign the resulting value to the velocity variable. And if you do that, your enemy is now going to move to the player. It's going to bump into a wall. And then it's going to oscillate because uh, once it reached the target, right now it's, it's trying to keep going towards the player. To avoid that, we can add an extra line at the start of physics process. We can say if the agent uh, has finished navigation, we can check that with the is navigation finished function, then we return from this. And if you still have the navigation agent selected, you can control uh, how far from the player it considers that it finished navigation with the target desired distance property. So you can say from 15 pixels away from the player, I consider that I reached the target. And so now if we do that, the enemy is going to move to the player and it's going to stop after one oscillation, right? Now, uh, the thing is, we calculated the uh, path to the player once, but then the enemy stops and it stops following the player around. So how do we make it keep following the player? The simplest way is using our timer here. It has a small wait time and it's going to cycle and emit its timeout signal periodically. And every time it emits the signal, we will recalculate the path to the player. So I'm going to select the timer node, control click and drag onto my script to create a new onReady variable. Um, and in my ready function, I'm going to connect the timer. So we can say timer.connect. We want to connect to the timeout signal and we're going to define a new function uh, that we'll call something like update pathfinding like this that will create at the bottom of our script. A very simple function um, that is going to call set target location on the agent. So we can actually copy this line from the ready function uh, right there and we can replace the line and our ready function with update pathfinding. Because I set the wait time to 0.1 seconds, this is going to get called 10 times per second, updating the path to the player 10 times per second, right? And now if we move the player, you will see the AI changes path. Uh, and thanks to the steering behavior, it does that fairly smoothly. One more thing that you can add is uh, changing the angle of the sprite of our enemy. So I'm going there again to create an already variable for the sprite. And in my physics process function, at the end, I'm going to write uh, uh, sprite.rotation is equal to velocity.angle. This is a function that calculates the angle of a given vector. And now the enemy is going to rotate towards where it's moving. You can see a couple of small hiccups and uh, the code we are using here is functional, but it's also uh, pretty simple. 
And so sometimes when the enemy recalculates the path, it's going to stop for a second. Um, and this is something that you want to smooth out in your code. If you're having the problem, you can smooth out the steering equation uh, by giving the enemy some more drag, or you could also modify the pace at which you update the path from the enemy to the player. Right now it's every uh, couple of frames, but you could lower that at a higher performance cost. Uh, using the timer, you can balance between performance and the AI's behavior. Anyway, with that, you know how to set up uh, AI pathfinding with the new navigation system in Godot 3.5. And in the next video, we'll see how to use the new obstacle avoidance feature to go one step further. This video and open source demo is sponsored by our courses. If you're a beginner, you will love Learn to Code from Zero with Godot. It's a complete course to get started with game development with tons of lessons and cool interactive practices. If you're more experienced, then Godot Node Essentials is for you. It's the biggest knowledge base about all the things you can do with Godot's nodes.